Heel hooks and why you should respect them. The heel hook is a common attack seen in combat sports such as Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, Sambo, or mixed martial arts. Within this world, this attack has a reputation of being very dangerous. So dangerous, in fact, that one of the larger Brazilian Jiu Jitsu competition organizations had banned the submission. Some schools do not even teach them. So what's the deal? What gave heel hooks this reputation? In this video, I will briefly show what they are, the relevant anatomy, and how that anatomy is affected by the submission attack. And then we will talk a little bit about why, in a sport that is overtly dangerous, with many other types of submissions, this particular submission is considered more dangerous. So what is a heel hook? First, I'll point out that it is a knee attack through a hold at the heel. The attacker uses his legs to secure his opponent's femur, then uses his arms to latch onto the heel, and then turns the opponent's heel to create a torsional or twisting force. This torsional force actually gets translated up through the ankle and then to the tibia and into the knee. I also want to point out that there are forces pushing the shin bone or tibia forward. The forces at the knee cannot transfer further as the femur is locked in. This is where the forces concentrate and injury occurs. There are different ways to secure the femur and there are different ways to twist the heel, but the goal is the same. So let's look at the anatomy involved in a heel hook. The joints primarily involved are at the ankle and the knee joints. The bones involved are the calcaneus, talus, fibula and tibia, and the femur. The major ligaments, see my video on ligaments for a refresher, that we will focus on at the ankle are the deltoid ligament on the inside and the lateral ligamentous complex on the outside. The lateral ligaments are much weaker than the relative large and thick deltoid ligament. At the knee, you have the anterior and posterior cruciate ligaments, ACL and PCL, that prevent anterior and posterior sliding of the tibia in relation to the femur. Then there are the medial and lateral collateral ligaments. The collateral ligaments prevent the knee from collapsing to either side. All of these ligaments of the knee contribute somewhat to rotational stability of the knee. I really want to double back and point out the bone structure of these joints. I feel this is really important. The bone structure influences where the stress on the joints and ligaments will go. The ankle joint or tibiotalar joint is enclosed in bone on the sides and on the roof. The ligaments about the ankle assist in stability. They do not have to stabilize the joint in as many directions as the ligaments at the knee. The knee joint is just two bones on top of each other. One pretty flat and the other rounded. Not much inherent bone stability in this structure. It is very dependent on the support ligaments provide. In general, the tibiotalar joint really just moves in one plane, up and down, dorsiflexion and plantar flexion. The knee joint is also mainly a hinge joint, moving from extension to flexion, up and down, but also has some rotational movement, as well as allowing for more external rotation, about 30 degrees, than internal rotation, about 15 degrees. For the ankle joint, the only direction that is not supported by bone is down. On the other hand, for the knee joint, there is minimal bone support in any direction that it might get pushed or twisted. Due to these bone anatomy differences, we can start to understand how they are susceptible to injury when they are taken out of their normal range of motion. Also, keep in mind that with stress on joints, usually ligaments fail before bone because ligaments are not as strong. So, back to the heel hook. With turning of the ankle, using the calcaneus as a lever, the forces get translated up to the ankle joint, which is fairly well supported by bone. This force then goes up to the tibia and fibula, but is concentrated at the knee as the femur is locked in place. Since the knee joint is entirely supported by ligaments during this twisting motion, it is these ligaments that rupture. And I will argue that the way these heel hooks are applied with some anterior pressure on the tibia that the ACL is always at risk. Now, I just want to quickly draw a contrast to another type of submission, toe holds. The attack is on a similar anatomic area, but very different in what ligaments are being attacked. 
Toe holds act by forcing the ankle joint into plantar flexion and inversion down and in where there's less bony support like we talked about earlier. This stress is primarily the smaller, weaker lateral ligaments of the ankle. So this is where often the injury occur. So back to the original question, what makes heel hooks so feared? Why the stigma? I mean, all joint submissions are putting bones, joints, and ligaments at risk. Well, there's a combination of three factors other than back in the day, these submissions were labeled as cheap. First, many novices are not familiar with the danger they are in when resisting this submission, especially if their academy is not teaching them. And I get why some academies do not teach them. Learning these submissions may take away from learning fundamentals, such as improving your position in a fight. But back to novices and their not being familiar. You can argue that novices don't often know the danger they are in in any position. So on to the next factor. The body does not provide a lot of warning prior to these knee ligaments rupturing. There are not a lot of pain receptors within the knee ligaments, especially the ACL, and especially in the central portion of the ligament where ruptures often occur. So there's very little warning after pain starts, but before the ligament tears. Sure, sure, but I sprain things all the time. So what if the ligament is injured? On to the most important factor. The ACL does not heal itself if it is completely ruptured. It requires surgical reconstruction. The duration of recovery is long. Not that long ago, an ACL used to be a sports career ender. Orthopedic surgeons have gotten much, much better at dealing with these injuries. And these injuries have progressed from a career ender to a career changer to now, in most cases, just a career pauser. Nonetheless, it often takes high-end athletes at least six months before returning to sport, but really it is closer to a year at most. This is a huge bummer when athletic careers have short windows. Now, there are many variations of heel hooks, but they fall into two main categories, inside and outside. The main difference is which direction the tibia, thus the knee, gets twisted. Inside heel hooks start on the inside, rotate the tibia outward, externally, and the outside heel hooks start on the outside and rotate the tibia internally. These clearly isolate different ligaments in the ankle and the knee. Both are going to put the knee ligaments and the ACL in danger. The outside heel hook theoretically puts the ACL in danger sooner than the inside heel hook. This is because the knee tolerates less internal rotation and the classic mechanisms for ACL rupture are from a forced valgus load, inward forces on the knee. The outside heel hook forces the knee into this position more readily. The ACL can also rupture with external rotation of the knee. Usually the ACL is tensioned when the knee is completely extended as opposed to flexed, but enough twisting in any direction is going to tear the ligaments of the knee. The ACL can rupture even without someone wrenching on the knee. Here we see Clay Thompson tear his ACL. The tibia is externally rotated, the knee is close to full extension, followed by valgus collapse of the knee. Look familiar? So, in conclusion, heel hooks are dangerous submissions that can cause serious damage. They should not be taken lightly. Students should learn proper technique in applying them and how to recognize when they're in trouble. Lastly, they are part of combat sports. They are effective and often available for attack. And to paraphrase Dean Lister, one of America's greatest submission grapplers ever, why ignore 50% of the body when trying to win? Be careful out there and let's keep moving.